Hello and welcome once again on this Monday afternoon. It's um, May. My name's Simon Williamson and I'm here from the Avago Inc. design team. Thanks for joining me today. I can see some of you have already logged on. We've got Elizabeth, Irene and Selma um, and I hope a few more people join us on the way. But what a lovely day it's been. It's been a bit rainy here in fairness. I've swam here but I'm here anyway. So <laughs> let's get started. So the first demonstration I've got for you is a really nice one using the owl collection. And this one's just going to be in a bit of a green theme. You can see on there. So I'm going to be using those background stamps that you can get in the collections, using the um, bagels and the muffin ones and the coffee beans and the tree ones. It is a bit of a green theme, this. I think it's a bit subconscious because I'm watching um, Incredible Hulk and then that's happened. So <laughs> let's then get started. I'm going to show you how to do this one. So let's get my stamping platform up. So to start off, I'm going to start off with this kind of embossed and a strip on this side. And I've got a strip already cut for that. I'm going to put that into my stamping press. And I've got that lovely coffee bean design. So it does join up this one. So I'm going to stamp half of it and then we'll deal with the other half afterwards. So I'll pick that up, give it a good press. I'm going to bring in my Versamark pad, give that a good ink in to make sure it's nice and well covered. I've got that really nice firm press down. It is textured this paper, so I want to make sure I get a nice crisp image. I'm just going to do a little bit more in the middle there. I can see there's a little bit more ink. And that's perfect. And I'm now just going to move this strip down so we can do the top half of this now. Use that magnet just to hold it in place. And we know these join up, so we're just going to get that to line up with the previous ones I've done. Let's move that down a little bit. Pick that up. I'm just going to ink the lower half this time so I don't need the whole stamp. Give that a good press down. I think that should be fine. I'm just going to take that to one side. Got a bit of scrap paper here. I've brought today the eyes ink embossing powders. This is the transparent one, but it's got a really nice kind of glitteriness to it. Um, I don't know if you can pick that up if I just tilt that forward a little bit. Probably hard to see, isn't it? You'll see it when it's embossed anyway. So let's get this onto his embossing areas. Just get that put on there. Elizabeth says it's a blast on the past, the incredible oak. I know, it's the only excuse I've got. See, I, well, I like the card and then when I finish, I'm like, it's all green. Let's put that to one side. I'm just going to put my loose powder away so I don't spill it. I love embossing powders. They go, they go so far, don't they, for little investment. I'm just going to use the heat gun on this now. Just bring it in without knocking any of that powder off. It's quite subtle, this. Is it? You'll see it change. It goes darker, but that glitter really starts to pick up. Like watching paint dry into this bit. <laughs> I 
Just spin it around so I don't burn my fingers on that last bit. There you go. So you can see now, I hope you can see the sparkle that you get in there. See, it's got loads of really iridescent glitters. It's lovely, it really is. When I thought, when I saw it was clear, I didn't expect that. It's a lovely surprise. So that's his first strip made. We're now going to move on to the second strip, which is this one with the little kind of coffee cake cups and donuts in there. So let's get the stamping platform back in. I think Janet and Dave have joined us, so welcome. The same again, I've printed a strip the right size. I'm just going to put that magnet on there to hold it. I'll place that where it needs to be. And pick that up. I'm going to use for this one the um, Isink Quick Dry Pad pigment one, and this one's Vert. It's just like their basic green. It's a really nice colour for this. Let's just give that a good ink in. Push that down. Push that one more time. I'm really happy with that. So I'm just going to move this strip down again like we did with the last one. And because this um, is a continuing pattern as well, I'll be able to get this matched up. So I'm just going to hold it lightly on the edge there. Place that over the top. So I have to excuse my head just a second. There we go. We'll pick that up. Yeah, that comes out. I did knock it slightly, but I think we can get away with that. Let's give it a little bit more ink. There we go. Move this to one side. You can see we've got that lovely pattern on there. If I hold that up for you, you can see all them like little cupcakes on there. It's really detailed. But I think it gets a little bit lost on this card. So I'm going to add a little bit more colour to it. Let's just bring in a piece of paper. And I just use the um, fan pan that was from Stamps By Me. I'm sure they've still got this, but it has a really nice green colour in there that I like to use. I'm just going to water it down a little bit so it's not as strong. I'm just going to paint in some extra green colours, a different kind of... Just to break up that background a little bit. So just some of the tops pale green. Add a bit more water onto there. Just lift some areas up to break it up, really. On the top of this donut. And this one. And I'm just going to go in a little bit more depth of this colour now and just do some other areas. It's quite subtle, this, but it'll just break it up a little bit for you. And I really handy these little water brushes for doing this. Let's just bring some of that darker to these areas.
I think I'm happy with that. So you don't need to do them all. It just breaks it up a little bit for you. I'll just wipe away that ink so I don't get it everywhere. Right, so I'm just going to assemble my background and then we can move on to the topper in a second. So I've just got a top folding um, white card and I've brought some corresponding green which I'm going to match straight onto there. I'll just get my tape running for this. Make sure that's level at this edge. That's a nice press down there. And then we've got a crisp white piece of card. I'm going to mat and layer that onto my green centre. Make sure that fits nicely. Make sure my card up is the right way. And then we've got our lovely embossed detail coffee bean strip. I'm going to mat that one onto the edge. Giving that a little bit of a white border as well. And then our like sweet confectionery donut strip with the watercolour panels. I'm going to do that to the opposite side just to break that whiteness up. There you go. So we've got our background all matted and layered. I'm just going to put that to one side now. And we're going to concentrate on this top element, which is these little trees and this owl and this sentiment. I'm just going to get some stamping platform again. Using all the stamps today, aren't I? So I've already pre-cut my panel that I want to use. I'm going to put the trees just towards the top half. And I'm keeping with that green theme, just using the same ink pad. I'm going to ink this where we need it. Give that a good push down. Make sure that's really vibrant. And then I'm going to move that over slightly. So we can get them trees secondary stamped in the middle. And it just gives you a little bit of like a distance effect, like they're going into the, into the actual distance. I'll move that out of the way. I'll just get my sentiment now, which is a lovely one that um, I think it's from one of the new Thirsty Brush collections, actually. I've got Perfect and You Are. I'll put those into position. Push them down. And we're going to green stamp these. That a good push. And then while that's still wet, it does dry fast this ink pad. I've got some of that embossing powder. So I just want to put that over the sentiment area. Tip that off. Get rid of that powder now. So we are finished with that for this demo. So glittery though, really, a really good investment. I can imagine using this at Christmas a lot as well. Let's just get that embossed as well, the sentiment. There we go. And because it's kind of iridescent, that glitter, it does pick up the colour you're stamping on top of. So it's almost made it kind of blues and grease, that reflection, which is really nice. So you can see that. I'll just try and spark it a bit. Oh, it's really hard to get that. <laughs> we tried, we tried. I'm just going to move my sentiment out of the way. 
And then while I've got the stamping platform, I'm just going to stamp our main character, which is our lovely sleepy owl with his little coffee mug. And same as before, sticking with the green ink pad. A good push down, nice crisp. Let's do that one more time so we get all that really fine detail. There we go. Move that out of the way. So. So I need like a mat for this to go on to. I'm going to use that crimp taste that comes in the owl kit as well. It's got like um, almost like a pie scallop edge. So let's get that through the die cutting machine. That can be cutting away. Bring my green back in in a second. Get that. It's a really quick background layer, but that scalp edge is lovely. I'm just going to mat that straight on so that it's ready for this car to be assembled in a second. That should go nicely within that shape. That nice push down. Put a little bit more tape under that bit. There we go. Let's just leave that to one side. And then we're just going to splash a colour onto our lovely owl character. We don't have to do a lot. We're going to use the same green paint as we did before. I'm just going to add a bit more water to it. I can just go in and pick out a few details like around its eyes. And maybe a little bit on its hat. slippers. I'll just go in with a slightly darker just so we can those little faux clairs, little coffee cup that and I think we should give him really dark eye bags with his tired look bless him. I think that's good. I don't need more than that. So I'll just give that a quick blast to dry it off. Okay. And I'm just going to die cut this little fella out as well so we don't have to um, worry about fussy cutting him. I'm just getting rid of that, that wet area of card so it doesn't splodge everywhere. And I'll get some, some of my low tack tape. Just to hold this in place. And then I'm just going to pop that through the die cutter as well. Bring my plates back in. I don't think I've missed any questions, but if you do have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments. I'll try and answer them. Put my paints away while we're doing that bit. Out so that tape don't get him. Let's move that a little bit from his hat. Here we go. So we've got all those components now, so we can assemble this at the final stage. So I'm going to put some foam pads underneath the topper layer. 
So we'll put those on first. I'm just making sure it's well covered as well, so I don't want it to sag in the middle. Take those off. We don't want to let go. Let's get that straight down the centre. Then on our little fella here, I've actually got some deeper pads, so I'm going to use these so it's got a little bit more height. Put those on. And we'll have him stood just above the sentiment. And there you go. This lovely green theme card. And it's just using all those elements from those owl collections, those mini backgrounds. You've got a lovely um, like coffee bean that we've glittered and we've got those, um, all them different sweet treats going down the edge. But it's a nice little card and you could obviously adopt that to a colour theme that you want to use. Or maybe don't watch Incredible Hulk just before you make a card sample. <laughs> That's what I do. Anyway, I'm glad you enjoyed that one. Now we're going to show you some more inspiration with the owl collection. And then um, I'll be back in a couple of seconds for another demonstration. So I'll see you in a second. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little video. Some lovely cards in there, weren't they? The design team did really well with the owl collection. I think there's some lovely inspiration. So I can see that some other people have joined. So there's Margaret. You're not late, don't worry. Thanks for joining us. We're on a second demo now, but the other one you can always get on catch up on um, the YouTube um, channel. So this next one is just going to be using the wood background die. It's a really nice, simple card. And it really shows off that background die as well and how easily it makes a card. So let's get started. So ahead of time, I've already die cut the wood panel and I've done it on this kind of like iridescent brown kind of paper. And I think I'm just going to map that onto the cream layer. So I'm just going to get my glue. I'm just going to run a trace down the edge. Get the glue to come out without. There we go. Um, I do this on my hand, but obviously don't do this if you've got any irritants that you know that you're likely to have with the glue. I'm just going to push that into the centre of each panel just so it gets a bit more glue on it. And that should stick down really nicely onto there. Give that a nice push down. There you go. I'll just wipe that off my hand so we don't get glue everywhere. So you don't need a lot of glue, but just enough in the middle to hold it. And I'm not really bothered about gluing every bit down because you really don't tell when you build your card up. So let's get this um, built up a little bit. So I've got a nice um, 
tent fold card, but I'm going to use it on its side. And I've already cut uh, another matching layer for the background. Let's get that tape put into place. A really fast card though, this one. If you get cut on the hop, you could easily make this one. That's the back card. And that's our next layer, which I'm going to leave there just for a second. And what I'm going to do now, concentrate on just getting these elements put together. So I need to get a sentiment stamped, sorry, sentiment, and there's dinosaur. So let's get a stamping platform in for those two items. And then we can do the rest at the end when we assemble. Just brick. Just going to wipe this because I've got a bit of green ink on it still from the last demonstration. Right, so I've got a bit of stamping um, watercolour card. And we're going to do our big dinosaur on there. And I've also brought in a scrap of this linen card, which I want the sentiment on. So I'm just going to put that down there. Move the magnet to secure both. And we can pick those up. And I've got my Versafine Black ink for it this time. I want a really crisp sentiment and a dinosaur. Give that a good push down. And I'm happy with those. So let's take those both out. Move these stamps off so I don't get ink everywhere. So that's one side. Right, so let's get the sentiment done first. What I need to do for this is just trim it down so it's like a strip. If we trim this down using this little cutter, and do the same again. And we just trim them ends off, which is probably faster with a pair of scissors just for the end bit. So we'll just trim it so it's at the right length that we need. We'll do the same again. And I'm just going to bring in some more of that corresponding dark brown that we're using on this cardstock. I've got a bit of wet glue for this. I'm just going to glue that directly on. We do it towards the corner as well. You can leave the border that you want, and then we can match it up in a second. So, really happy with that. You can use this cutter again. I really like this cutter. I don't know if you've got one of these at home, but it's got like a, a wire guide so you can see exactly where you're cutting. Makes it a lot easier. I'll just trim that end off. There you go. So that's the sentiment. So let's put that there to one side. Move it out of the way. And now I need to give our lovely dinosaur a little bit of colour. I'm going to bring in this fan pan again. So let's just get some green onto this mat. We just want to give it a base colour. So we can just brush that straight on with this water brush. We don't have to worry too much about the details, we can put that in afterwards. So I'm just going to get that green colour all over. Little legs. And it's stummy. Onto its tail there. And then what we can do then is can mix a little bit more of that green in. And we can go back in now, we want it a bit dar darker. So take a bit more over there, around its legs. its tail and a little bit more on its face here to bring it out a bit. 
thing, and it's like instant shade and then doing it that way. I'm just going to clean my brush off a little bit. And we need to give it like an orangey colour, I think, to his tummy. Let's go for this orangey colour. And we'll just brush that in. And there you go. You don't need to do any more than that. You can do as little or as much as you like. I'll just get my cloth again. Pick up these colours so we don't ruin any of his artwork. There's a question there. What make of paper sign? What GSM, please? The on the actual. Um, do you mean on? Sorry, Margaret, isn't it? Do you mean when we cut out this die? I think this is quite a low, uh, low GSM, probably about a 180. Um, the actual card itself is a 300 blank, um, but it's definitely more of a paper than a card. It's not got a lot of rigidity to it. So I would guess about the 180 mark. I hope that helps you. If it doesn't, put a question again if I've got it wrong. <laughs> then we've got our die outline for his dinosaur. So I'm just going to get some more masking tape. Yeah, if it's the dark brown, it will be that 180. Might even be a little bit thinner. It's a really good dye, though. It cuts really well, so um, you don't really, you know what I mean? The paper, once you glue it down, it, it actually, the card at the back takes all the actual rigidity. Let's put that on there. We're just going to pop that through our die cutter. You're welcome, Margaret. I sometimes find when you've got a background dye that is really detailed, if you go down a little bit in the GSM, you get, it cuts a lot easier. Um, so try that. I don't know whether you're having a particular problem with the way you've questioned or... But if not, hopefully that answered your question. We've got our lovely little dinosaur now there. We've got our sentiment, we've got our backing bits. And then we're going to finish this off now with some of this Hessian kind of stripping that I found in a craft shop. I've cut two bits of that. And I've got some double-sided tape, so it's the best thing I can find to hold this on. So I'm going to use this layer. I'm going to put this into position before we mount it onto his card blank. And then that way it's easy to control. Let's start off with getting our double-sided tape. And I think we're going to go across there. I'll turn this over. Give that a bit of a snip. And you can push that onto the back of the card then. I'm just going to grab my poker tool. Me and double sided tape don't always get on. <laughs> Let's just try and lift this up. There we go. My first time. Never does when you want it to, though. Uh, so I'll take that off. And then I'm just going to put that underneath, just to give me a bit of a raise. And I'm going to push that onto position. Put that over. And then you've got the tape on the back anyway. So I can just push that over. It'll just secure the ends. The same with that bit. Give that a good push down. And anything that we don't want to hang off this card, we can just trim off now at this stage. So that's one already in place. I'm going to do one now in the top half. Let's put one about there. Flip it over again. Move that tape. I want to make sure that goes over the tape as well, so about there, flip it over, 
and then secure the end bits for that double side at the back of the card. I find this the best way. And you could always put a little bit of wet glue under this with it being such a textured kind of um, ribbon. You don't want it to not stick, but the double sided does a really good job. So they're in place. I know that they're good. I've got my card there anyway. Because I've got so much depth now under this ribbon, I need to raise it up a little bit on pads. So I brought some pads with me today. Let's give that a bit of height. Just put a few more in the middle. Let's just take them edges off. Well, I love sticky foam pads, I've got to say. We'll just get that into the centre of our card blank. Make sure it's open in the right way, which it is. And then we've got our lovely little dinosaur, which I'll use some more foam pads. We're spoilt with these foam pads though, aren't we? When I first started, I used to use a um, draft excluder from Wilkinson's, <laughs> and then glue the other bit. Put a little bit under his head. And I need one just behind the sentiment to go up here. I might have to trim this down a little bit, we'll see. I might just get away with that actually. Let's see if it sticks out too much. No, I don't think you'll see that one, Sam. Just pull these off. And we can stick that over his little Hessian bit. Some of those bits out. I'll turn that around for you guys. So it's a really quick and simple card, that one. But it just shows you how that wood background die really pulls together that card really fast. And it, all you need to do is add your little character and your sentiment on there, and it comes together lovely, doesn't it? So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll just get the other card that we did earlier. We've got two completely different cards then today, haven't we? We've got this green theme, mainly because I was watching Incredible Hulk, I've got to be honest. <laughs> And then we've got this lovely dinosaur card using that wood panel background. So two lovely cards, two easy to make ones. Uh, and you could put more detail in if you want. It can also change the theme. But hopefully that'll give you a little bit of inspiration. Uh, and you can have a go at that. Where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes. Where there's an incredible hope, there's a green card as well, Irene, I tell you. But thanks very much for joining me today. And I will see you next Monday. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.